Okay, good evening uh, everyone, bonsoir à tous et à toutes, and uh, welcome to tonight's presentation of OTF Connex titled, and the winner is, using math game to create meaningful discussions and purposeful practice with Jonathan So. Um, we are glad to have you all with us tonight. Um, I am suspecting that we're going to have a few more people joining us in the next few minutes because we have you know, we'll be expecting um, some, some 20, 25 people tonight, uh, although we are competing with uh, a number of um, games and uh, particularly nice weather, uh, which is always conducive to doing other things than uh, sitting in front of a computer. But anyway, I, uh, small groups are always a good opportunity for um, participation, so I invite you all to intervene and share your ideas uh, with us tonight, uh, post them into the chat box, and uh, Jonathan will be happy to answer them and to interact with you all along his uh, presentation. Uh, comme d'habitude, je voudrais aussi profiter de l'occasion pour souhaiter uh, la bienvenue à nos collègues franco-ontariens. We are definitely thrilled to have um, each and every one of you with us tonight. It's also an absolute pleasure to welcome Jonathan So. Um, most of you are from the southern part of the province and uh, uh, always someone there in the north part. Um, uh, Jonathan is a, a grade 6 teacher at Relo Sun uh, Public School in the Peel District School Board. Um, he loves how teachers continues to inspire and be the difference that makes the difference. He is a lover of bow ties. He's a father of three wonderful kids and also an avid uh, runner. Uh, Jonathan told me, um, we spoke a, a day or two ago, he told me that he just completed his first half marathon over the weekend and uh, he did it in uh, in just about an hour and a half, so to put things in perspective, and that's about the same time as an OTF Connect session. And so, to me, that's truly unbelievable, uh, an unbelievable achievement. Um, it is the first time I have the pleasure of uh, working with Jonathan. I uh, was actually talking to one of my best colleagues at OTF a few days ago, and I told her that I was moderating with Jonathan, and she said, oh, I know Jonathan very well, he is the best of the best, and I don't think that she meant in terms of his athletic abilities. So I think that we are really um, all in for a really exciting uh, session tonight. So at this point, I'm going to invite uh, Jonathan to jump in. Uh, so feel free to click on your talk button, Jonathan, and, uh, and go ahead anytime you wish. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. It's going to be a nice small group, so uh, feel free to chat in the, the box or if you want to actually input your voice. Hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, it's also a crazy night. My, my son's not sleeping very well. So I, I hope I can make it through all the hour and a half um, here for you. Uh, so today is all about math games, which is kind of interesting uh, as I was planning this to make... Uh, an online webinar about games. So I'm hoping that we can play some games today and uh, uh, have some fun. So first of all, uh, as Michael said, I'm uh, Jonathan. I teach in grade six currently. Uh, next year, I am going to be an instructional coach for Peel. And I teach at a balanced calendar, so I leave my lovely balanced calendar for a regular school calendar. But uh, feel free to follow me at, uh, at Mr. So Classroom. I also have down below is uh, bit.ly slash Mr. So Resources, and you can find all my presentations there. Uh, these are my three lovely kids and my wife. Uh, so my oldest is Izzy, and Mike is the middle one with his mouth wide open there in that middle picture. and. Levi is the little baby in the basket, in most cases, smiling as he normally is, being the third one. Uh, welcome, Craig. So you can find my, uh, for this presentation, I did have it on Google Slides. Uh, so here it is. Here's the short link. Uh, bit.ly slash winner is five and uh, capital I, capital W. And so this way you can um, have all the slides along with it. There's some links that we'll go through, but Michael here will... Uh, be putting them in for me um, as we go. Please, if I go too fast, let me know too. <laughs> so today, I'm hoping to talk about math games, but more importantly, how we can use them to have like a balanced math approach to, to learning, where we can put purposeful math, where we can talk about 
mathematics as a whole. I know we hear a lot of things about facts based and, and let's get back to basics, but I think we can really integrate a lot of games to offer all that. So I'm hoping to show you some games. I'm hoping to talk uh, a lot about how we can use these. Uh, I want to get into some board games uh, and Craig just joined too, so he's an awesome person uh, to talk about board games as well, but I have his link to his uh, YouTube channel. Thanks for joining, Craig. Uh, and uh, we're going to be playing some games, which should be interesting as you play by yourself, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so just to get to know the room a little bit, in the chat, um, can you just tell me what grade you teach or what your role is? And while uh, you're doing that, I just want to jump in to say that I'm experiencing some minor uh, sound problems. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. It looks like the the internet is not perfectly stable. I think it's going to be fine. Uh, you know, from some t from time to time, um, you know, Jonathan's uh, voice is interrupted, but then it, it catches up. So I think it's going to be fine. We we're going to keep going on through the presentation. But I'm I'm hearing some small problems. Nothing major okay. though. Okay. Oh, nice. Looks like we have a lot of. Uh we have, ooh, nice one, grade six. Okay, some juniors, four or five splits. Say, Tracy and Craig can get together there. And uh, good, we have some pretty good, grade one math only. That sounds interesting. Okay, so let's move on a little bit. Uh, because this is a webinar and an online gaming type of thing, traditionally I would have these uh, cards, I would have paper copies of things. So in order to kind of facilitate that, I've put a lot of uh, links to some good, some good extensions. So there's an, an extension called Really Good Dice for Chrome. So if you're in a Chrome browser, you can download the extension. Uh, this will give you like a, an actual dice that can flip around. Uh, you can also just Google dice, roll dice, and it'll, it'll roll some dice for you. Uh, later on, I, I forgot to put the link for deck of cards, but I do have it later on. And of course, mathies.ca. Matthews.ca is a great online platform for Ontario educators that have uh, tons of virtual manipulatives. So if today you need any fractions or uh, hundreds of cards, things like that, the, this is a site that you can get those on that will help you with just explaining your, your thinking. So uh, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully it works, but if you can go to this link here, the first question I would like to ask you is how do you use math games in your classroom? And so you can actually go to the, the link and my, uh, has put it in there for me and um, input your thinking right in that Google Doc and I'm hoping it works. Jonathan, just remember when you share your screen to go slowly because there's a little bit of a lag. Yes. So just move your, yeah, just take your time and it will be fine. <laughs> and you don't need to put your name if you don't want to, um, but it's nice to share who we're talking to. Oh, Michelle's getting into Alex Lawson's games. Nice. <laughs> if anyone uh, would like more information, if you go to the, if you have Alex's What to Look For book, uh, she has a whole section chapter on certain primary games that build uh, number sense. So it's another good uh, resource that you can go to. Um, I'll make sure I add it to the slide deck and actually email uh, Michael about it too, um, <laughs> so that you have that link. Uh, I love the idea of reinforcing concepts. Uh, that's exactly what I use most of my math games for. Um, I know when I first started teaching, it was a lot of that early finisher activities for me or warm-ups to, uh, to get students kind of thinking uh, about certain concepts. But as I started doing more research about it, I, I realized that math games actually have a really good purpose for it. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, um, there is a link just above that's uh, bit.ly slash winner is two. If you click on that, you'll bring it to a Google Doc page. Um, and if you can just insert your ideas about how you use math games in the classroom. Uh, and if you don't, it's okay too. 
but we're um, we're just sharing some ideas about what we use what we use gaming for um, for our math. And and as of course with Google Pages, you can accidentally type in the same uh, <laughs> screen as someone else. <laughs> Hello, Vanessa. Welcome. I love the idea of it reviewing guided math groups, so ongoing practice instruction. And yes, that's what I've been learning so far, Craig. I love how you put assessment in here. Um, yes, I'll put it in again. So I've been using math games a lot lately as assessment purposes just to see as, as I play with the students or if I um, play with or if I watch them, I can see what strategies they're using, uh, how they're actually using certain facts. Uh, I know my daughter, uh, she's in grade two and she loves using them as well, playing certain, certain games. Hi, Karen. Welcome. Um, I'll post the link one more time. <laughs> We are just in this in this link here into the Google page and just talking about what we or how we use classroom uh, or math games in the classroom and I'll I'll switch over in a minute back to the uh, the slide deck but uh, this of course will be up uh, for everyone ooh skunk I love probability we just played that game with the grade sixes. Okay, so feel free to keep adding to this uh, document if you feel like it. I'm just going to stop sharing. Sorry if I go too quickly for the screen. It does lag. I know that. Um, I'm hoping. Ah, back here. Okay, so hopefully everyone sees back to the, uh, the screen that we're using. I loved everyone's ideas about how we're using games. Mary Jo, thank you for adding there. there. Uh, using games for intros and early finishers uh, was how, where I started with games. Uh, I was fortunate enough to work with Alex Lawson. Uh, she's a professor at Lakehead um, at Brookmead when I first started teaching, and she really introduced me into using games. And I, and I first, being a beginning teacher, I kind of thought of it as, okay, when you finish the problem, here's some things to do. But as I started seeing kids use the games, I realized that they have a lot more potential to um, build concepts and really work with it. So I started to implement uh, one day a week to make sure that I had a whole math period or two math periods devoted to actually playing certain games. Um, and these games were taught within the class and they were meant to reinforce the skills that we were working with. This allowed our students to better practice their number sense, uh, if it was patterning in algebra or whatever we were working on, the game reinforced that. And then by the end of the year, the game started to become things that students actually picked up just for the fun of it. They, they, they rather play these games and I love the comments that I always get around gaming and they're like, we're not learning math, Mr. So. And I'm like, yeah, you are. Um, and it, it's a fun way to introduce a lot, of these, a lot of the concepts. So one of the games that I love doing is playing cards. My reason I love playing cards is that cards themselves have their own manipulative. So a lot of my primaries uh, who have, a lot of my primaries where um, they're having trouble, you know, counting, one-to-one -one tagging, uh, and I'm sorry that the doc didn't, didn't work there, um, Catherine, I will, um, yeah, family connections is great too, and I'll talk about that later on, about, about it all there. but. Um, so my kids actually would count the, the pips, like the little uh, diamonds or clubs or, or spades, whatever you call them. Uh, someone told me they were called pips, so I call them pips now. Um, or the number recognition is there as well. Uh, I also love cards because they're fairly cheap to buy. Um, I think I one pack for a dollar at the dollar store. Uh, often I give all my kids one deck of cards before they start. Uh, the only hard part is when they start destroying the ones that are in your school, in your classroom, and you have to rearrange them all. So I have in here um, a card game. So you will see, yeah, the card game link is the first one there. Because it is online, uh, I realized that we have some uh, 
issues playing, you know, cards online. So I've put two uh, online carding things. You may have to open two windows to play the game. Uh, so I'm going to open up the cards and share my screen one more time to talk about the games that we want, I, want, I would like you to play. And I'm going to give you about eight minutes to explore one of the games, and then we're going to debrief it. So slowly sharing screen. And I apologize if we're going to go back and forth between screens because uh, that's the only way I can really share. So the first game I have in here is called uh, Go 10. Uh, Go 10 is one of my primary games, and it really builds the, the fluency of, of what 10 means. Uh, the way it's just like Go Fish, but instead of Go Fish, um, ooh, travel soap. Sorry, that I'm, I'm, I have ADD, so any little comment that comes in the wall, I kind of like squirrel it. Uh, a deck of cards. Oh, don't worry about it. A deck of cards, uh, so one to nine, and then uh, the kids just like Go Fish. Uh, do you have a, a nine if they had a one or an ace to build that ten? And then once they build ten, they can go on from there. Hopefully that's slow enough. <laughs> uh, another one that I love uh, for primary and even into junior, so grade three and four, is building um, addition and subtraction fluency. So using addition and subtraction war. So instead of playing war, where you you, pl you put the card down, if it's the same card, then you know then whoever or whoever has the highest card takes the deck. Um, you have to flip the cards down, and the first person to add them correctly or subtract them. Uh, wins the, the round. If they say it at the exact same time, then the students uh, keep them in the pile, and then they have to play another one. Um, and then whoever wins that one continues to have it. I've done this game with three people as well, so you can put, um, you can put the cards up on their head, uh, facing out, so they can't see the card that's on their head, but they can see their opponent's one, and the third person has to add it, and the other player has to tell what card is on their head. So not only is their adding involved, but now they're doing the reverse operations. And you can do that with multiplication and division as well. Uh, not division, sorry, uh, multiplication as well, um, working with addition and, and subtraction slash multiplication war. The other game is called 99. Uh, this game is counting up to 99, but without uh, not going past 99. So the, the loser is the person that gets to 100. Uh, each card is worth the various points, and so they learn um, how to jump by tens, jump by certain numbers, and uh, if you need to, you can actually have uh, a number line uh, along with them to help them out, or a hundreds chart that could help out certain primaries, but I do love this game even in my junior grades uh, because it helps, again, build that fact fluency, it builds the automaticity, and it actually even builds visualization with, a, with those number lines, which is something that our students really need to build on. And so my last two games are bigger or smaller numbers. So you can actually create for place value, um, depending on your grade level. It doesn't matter which one it is. Uh, you can build, you can say, hey, let's build a two-digit number. So they flip two cards and they have to build the biggest number. You can build a, a five-digit number uh, with the cards that are there. I play this game a lot of times with myself against, some, against the, the class, and it's really fun to, uh, to talk about various things. And then, of course, Multiplication War is there as well. Yes, flash fluency is a killer pretty much everywhere. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to give you about eight minutes, eight to ten minutes to play one of these games. Um, it's going to be interesting to play the games without, maybe you have a deck of cards or without someone yourself, but uh, again, uh, you can try the deck of cards random.org or the, um, the one just below is uh, HTML. Uh, sometimes I open two windows up and you can play, you can hit the cards themselves. And I think, Michael, you can probably put a timer on. We'll give about eight minutes uh, to please try some of these games. And when you do, if you go to this link here, you can type, you can tell me what game you've played and uh, what you've learned from it.
Jonathan, I realize that you still have your microphone on, so it's probably better to keep it off when they are doing the game. And then when they return in about seven minutes, they will give us a green check mark. And I think that uh, Karen just joined us. Uh, so you may want to maybe quickly tell Karen what we are doing. We are playing a game right now, but you could maybe quickly tell her uh, what to do so that she doesn't miss on that. And then you can turn your microphone off again. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Hi, Karen. Uh, welcome. We were playing um, some, some cards, which is kind of interesting to play online, but I'm going to repost the links to the card decks. Um, so my game... My games are the first one, and then the, the bottom two are just online cards that you can grab, uh, unless you have your own deck of cards. Uh, and then we're just playing about six more minutes to try one of the games that are on there, or two if you want. And then um, on this, if you go to this link right here, uh, you won't be able to click on that, but you can type it into your URL, or um, we'll put it in the chat bar in a minute. Uh, and then that will bring you to a Google page to talk about what you have um, been playing and learning about cards. Okay, uh, Tracy, sorry about the Google page not working. Um, I don't know if you're on, just checking to see if you're, no, you're online. Oh, I don't know. It's okay, you can put it in here in the chat and I'll add your comments into, um, into, the, into the bar. So I'm just going to share my screen uh, again. <laughs> just making my screen a little bigger. Uh, so feel free to keep typing in as you go. Um, I'm loving some of the, the concepts here as we go through things. Bigger or smaller, it's a great number sense review. You may start with less than five cards. Uh, another one you can do, Mary Jo, um, instead of using it as a, a review, you can even start it off as a diagnostic, and you can see easily how students are, students are uh, understanding of place value, whether they can create certain numbers, uh, and then you can even use it as a quick assessment afterwards, just create create numbers in here. Um, I love 99. I'm so glad, Catherine, that your daughter in grade, nine, grade 6 love it too. My grade 6s do love it. Uh, and you can, you can actually incorporate and change it depending on the grade levels. Like you can add certain, you can add, make different cards, you know, like make one subtract 9 if you really wanted to. Um, I also see it as a, a good introduction to cribbage which is another fun game to play for strategy and number sense, but with more of a, a bigger uh, card game in there. Uh, Marlene went to Skunk, which is a fun game to play for probability and mental math. Uh, and then when you throw in the idea around uh, what is the probability of rolling certain dice numbers, uh, that's always fun to do, too. Uh, when students realize that it's not just a 1 to 6 when you have two dice anymore, or a 1 to 12 as you used to do. So uh, we will be using this um, table for all the games that we'll be playing today. So uh, it, I'm hoping that, ooh, a cribbage club? Yes. <laughs> I love that. Uh, I'm hoping that we can constantly go into this, uh, into this chart, and then that way this chart will also be live for everyone so that you can go back to the ideas later on and see how people are using them or what games people played in hopes that um, we can play some more. So I'm going to so keep filling it out if you're not filling it out. It's okay. Um, 
I'm going to stop sharing here. Perfect. So another uh, way we can incorporate uh, games uh, is in online games. So I know with our 21st century tools and everything that we have, there's, there's a wide variety of games. And, and I've always said this, it is not the game itself, uh, but what we as teachers are going to do with it. Uh, I think as teachers, we can pretty much do anything we want, uh, as, but we have to keep in mind the good pedagogy behind it. Uh, and that's the important part. So what I found is um, five various games that I think are like online platforms that are amazing platforms to try and incorporate in your classroom. These are ones that I've put in there that build um, good and decent number sense. Uh, and I'm, I'll explain uh, some of them for, for you. And um, we are actually going to play one of the games with Knowledge Hook. So Knowledge Hook is an Ontario-based, uh, small little base company in Kitchener-Waterloo, uh, go Kitchener. And um, they have all Ontario gaming systems, uh, based systems. So it's all Ontario curriculum, which is another great, amazing thing, because a lot of times the online platforms are American. And so we can't really find some of the curriculum that we need. Now, Knowledge Hook is grade 3 all the way to grade 10. So unfortunately, my K-2 teachers, it doesn't really work for you in that, in that instance, but there are, the other ones will. Uh, but the nice thing about I love about, grade, uh, about Knowledge Hook is that it is an assessment tool, first and foremost. And I'll show you how that works later on. Uh, the game show part, did you get back, Mary Jo? My audio... The, audio, the internet seems to be cutting in and out, so I apologize. Um, I know uh, we were saying that before. I was having problems, too, when being introduced. Hopefully it comes back. If not, let me know. Uh, so uh, Knowledge Hook it has a free section for it. It's called Game Show, which is very much like Kahoot, uh, which will get to itself. And we will... Um, but it, it is all, again, Ontario multiple choice questions. It also has a portfolio uh, section so kids can actually take pictures of their work and they can even now write in uh, explanations. So it's a really great way to introduce certain concepts and have a lot of fun. Uh, Dreambox is not free. Uh, it is an app and an online, plot, like a, a digital uh, computer tool as well. Um, but it is all the way from K to 6, and it's built on FOSNO's trajectories. So the, the students actually learn, like, if, if they get certain things wrong, it'll bring them down. If they get things right, it'll bring them back up. Uh, and so it, it really helps with, um, with students building, and it's a fun. It, my daughter loves playing this game. Um, some boards have purchased it, but it is quite uh, pricey. Um, sometimes I've recommended if certain parents want to get in on it, like if you get like 10 parents, they can buy a license and then kind of like share. Sometimes they can group their money together a little bit. Uh, Kahoot is not so much uh, an, a math gaming site. It's more of a, a, a quite a game show site that you can put math questions on. And they do have their own math questions, but you can put your, you can make your own stuff. Prodigy. Uh, is another one that students have fun with. It is um, a pure gaming uh, gamification of, of facts. And, and uh, again, an Ontario-based system. Kids go around a certain world, and they have to fight certain um, animals or, I don't know, enemies. And the way they fight is based on math questions. So they have to actually answer math questions in order to get certain powers. Another one that I love uh, is called Empower. Now, Empower is free for all Ontario educators. It is uh, run by TVO, and uh, it's K all the way to grade 6. So this works for all of us elementaries, and that's another free site. Uh, it is not like you can't really have your students... Um, you can't be like, oh, we're learning geometry today. Okay, everyone log into Empower and we're going to learn geometry. It is just like Prodigy. Uh, it is a gamification. So you can set it up as center work. So this is where I do a lot of my centers for their online gaming. Uh, while certain students are working on problems, I add in centers that they can get on their computers and play certain things like Knowledge Hook, uh, Dreambox, Prodigy, or Empower. 
and the students go around and they try to, uh, to do various things. And again, Empower is free. It is run by TVO, and it's K all the way to um, 6. So it's a lot of fun. Hopefully you have some improvements, Mary Jo. <laughs> I'm sorry if you don't. So we are going to play a game. Uh, we're going to play Knowledge Hook. I haven't set it up yet, so I'm, I'm going to share my screen, and then uh, but I'm going to show, show you what you need to do. If you go to khmath.com slash join, and when it, it's not open yet, uh, and this is the class code that you'll need to put in, mojo562. Uh, so let me share my screen. You shouldn't need to Can sign I just jump in, in for a second, uh, Jonathan? There we go. I just want to mention that Jonathan seems to have small problems with his internet, and it's cutting off, and you've probably noticed that uh, his voice changes to a higher pitch. It's like a chipmunk uh, type of voice. It's just because the sound is catching up. So th there's a little lag for, for a split second. Oh. And then the the sound is catching up, and his voice sounds a little weird until uh, actually the the internet is stabilized. It's unfortunately a problem that we have from time to time. I'm sorry about that. I am sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. <laughs> So if you can log in, uh, it shouldn't ask you to register, or if it does, it, it's probably going to ask you to pick a name or whatever. Um, so again, this is the free uh, part of things. Um, we're going to quickly do some free questions, and I'll, I'll show you the back end of this. Give everyone just a couple seconds more. I don't know how many people are still in this. <laughs> okay. Awesome. There's everyone. <laughs> the nice thing about Knowledge Hook is that you can um, play. Even if I hit play, everyone can still join along. Um, and it will be in the top corner. I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to hit play, and the first question should come up. So here's the login if you're still trying to log in, is right here. This works on anyone's device. So if you're on a mobile device, if you're on a platform device, or on a computer, it works very well. So the other part of Knowledge Hook is that all these multiple choice questions are all different for various people. So even if you sat next to someone, they would look very different. Hopefully I'm not scaring two people off, too many people off talking about triangles. <laughs> Bring back some math phobia here. <laughs> oh, nice, someone uploaded the solution. It's awesome. So you can see on my screen that someone has put up a solution. So this is what I love about uh, an off-show. Um, this only works for if you have a camera. And so sometimes if you have a mobile device, it works the best. If you don't, it doesn't. Um, knowledge hook does not need to be one-to-one. -one. I've done this one-to-five. I've done this one-to-two. Um, and all I've asked to have the students do is as they uh, every time we play a game, we just rotate certain people's numbers, so that way they always get their um, they always get their points at the end of it all. The other thing about knowledge check is that it's uncompetitive, so that students um, there's no time. It's really up to you as a as a as a teacher, so you can really use this as pedagogy uh, first and foremost versus timed. The other cool part about it is that um, as if you get the, uh, there's a paid set parts to it, there's homework that you can use as well, so a at home connection. Uh, uh, at home connection, and um, Catherine, Craig's teasing me. 
<laughs> he's one of my colleagues. <laughs> and uh, so that when there's a misconception happening, parents will actually get an email about it. And so he, um, so that way it will help them figure out certain key things to help help their child at home, like certain activities they can do. So I'm going to stop. I'm sorry for the uh, other 13 people that um, haven't finished yet. I'm going to stop this question. So here we go. Oh wow, nice, 100%. I will tell you as a group, you are one smart group because this is the first time that I've actually had 100% answer the question correctly. <laughs> So sometimes we get some of the misconceptions happening, and so I ask my students, I use it as an opportunity to, ask, to add in some purposeful talk. And this is what I love about games in general. It creates that purposeful talk that you have to have in the classroom. So instead of me always yapping and talking about things, I'm able to talk to students about why is point wrong. Okay, and so, so we have a good like conversation uh, about it. I also... Um, can share, oh yeah, <laughs> share certain strategies. <laughs> so I can see how how certain they go too fast. <laughs> so I, I can share strategies, and if you had a picture of it, you can actually take a picture. So it's pretty good as well. And this explaining part is a brand new uh, connection to things to things. Okay, so let's try one more question. Yeah, cool gifts. <laughs> okay, last question. I haven't scared you, I'm really scaring you now. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to end it. There we go. Okay, so we got some good, we got we got some good questions happening there. So a question that I would often ask my uh, in the think pair share, you know, why would uh, this question here be incorrect? Uh, of course, no one knows who got it correct or incorrect, which is a great way to continue continue to build those positive climates around math. But we can have that discussion about about, about mistakes and about why. Those are mistakes that are happening. Um, and that's okay if you fully didn't understand the question. Um, it, and that, that allows us to have those conversations with our students. And so that's what I love about Knowledge Hook. I'm going to end this now. I'm going to end the actual game. Uh, you can go on for, for everything that you have there, but this is the back part of it that I love about, that this is the side that kids don't see, but as teachers they get to see. So I actually get to see here, you know, out of all the times I've done it, you know, where, where are uh, going, if I view, uh, if I actually viewed the various things that are happening, depending on how my internet's going to do, um, I can see which questions which questions are going okay, um, which questions are certain students getting wrong, uh, why are they getting it wrong, 
I, I can send notes to parents. It really allows us as teachers to really build that good formative assessment piece to things. Uh, Prodigy will do the same thing. Uh, Empower will do the same thing. Dreambox does the same thing. Uh, the only one that doesn't do it is Kahoot because it, it's not really a math online form. It's just, it's just a game show uh, format. So to brainstorm some more ideas, if you could, in the chat bar, um, have a, a little quick discussion about how you could use online games in your classroom, uh, just put it right in the chat. Um, that'd be great. Or if you have any questions about online games, you can put that in there too. Nice. Ooh, exit ticket. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, so we have practice, could easily work with pairs. Um, if you do knowledge hook uh, in pairs, sometimes I have uh, a moderator computer if you wanted to. So you basically set up the computer to run the game show, but it j all you do is I just tell kids to hit the button next so they, they can still answer the question and um, because you do need to have one computer running the whole show. Yes, goal setting, awesome. To reach certain levels in Prodigy, how are we going to get there? What are we going to have to do? It's awesome. Okay, so um, now into, uh, you know, a little less fun, just talking a little bit about math in general. Um, I love this graphic. This is from uh, a friend of mine, Matthew Ulrich. Uh You may know him on Twitter. If, um, but the idea is that as teachers, we're always on this continuum of learning and teaching. You know, sometimes we're in this, you know, how much guidance do we give? Do we do fully, fully guided instruction versus unguided instruction? How much time do we allow them to play? I know if, you know, Doug Ford, you know, let's, let's redo the, uh, let's all revise the whole math curriculum because we're all in this funk. We have the, we have all this ideas about back to basics. But in, in the reality of things, it's not really about um, where we sit on this continuum, but that we have to remember that our classroom and our, especially our math classroom needs to be a balance between things. Um, it, it needs to be a section where we have fully guided sometimes. And it needs to be, there needs to be times where we are having unguided instruction. And math games kind of sits and allows us to have those specific times to things. Uh, in our PO board, we talk about a balanced math. Uh, these are our tenants, that we kind of follow. Uh, we talk about attitudes. We talk about approaches to uh, um, instruction and assessment, you know, our basic facts fluencies, purposeful practice, purposeful resources, and teaching through problem solving. And the, the bottom three are more for teacher related to things, but the, the top six are the important things that we have to think about. Uh, and math games encompasses all of that. So when students are playing math games, uh, especially if it's new, it can be a good problem. Uh, it allows students to have that purposeful practice where they are focusing on certain strategies, where they are talking about strategies. Uh, I also encourage students to think about the, uh, think about the strategies and, and know that it's not about winning the game. Yes, it's fun to win games, but if your partner is struggling or the people you're playing with struggling, then we need to help them out and we needed to encourage that discussion that's happening there. We talk about assessment. We can easily observe our students and see where they're struggling or how they're struggling as they're playing the games. I also love the idea around having them as a center. Uh, I know some people may be doing the daily three uh, from very loosely following the daily five in literacy, but the idea is that you can work with a small group on a game. Uh, you can talk about strategies. No problem, Lisa. 
uh, we're just in the middle of, of some of the games, and you can always go back uh, afterwards with the links. Uh, and of course, attitudes to math. I think when have fun, when kids have fun, they have a better attitude towards mathematics. They don't see it as these sets of rules that they must follow, but they start to really build the connections. And I think that links the, the final, really the big piece of, of games is that basic facts and operational skills. And I think it's funny when we read in the papers, they say, you know, we don't have these skills anymore. And I'm like, I don't know what teacher is not doing this. And I think as educators, we're all doing this in some way. Uh, but math games allows for purposeful learning of facts and purposeful operation skills. It's not just, here's a quick memorization, let's go and do it. Um, and so I think we have to keep that in mind as we work through uh, the games. That it does offer a wide variety. It's not just, you know, um, that when we're finished, let's have some fun, but that we can actually use games to teach skills and to help us understand where our holes and our gaps in our, in our learning. So uh, we're going to play another game. Um, and I'm going to explain the games first. I have a primary side to it, and I have a junior side to it. Uh, and by all means, you can play either one. Um, so I'm going to share my screen first. So this is the junior game. Uh, it's called Pathways, and there are many pathway, uh, many games versions of it. So this is the 6 to 12. I'll scroll a little slow. I have 4 to 9. And I, in my math game folder, I have more. Uh, you, can, you can find them um, later on in the game, but I, I just put two of them in here for now. This game is also called Four in a Row. Um, it's like a tic-tac-toe version. Uh, what you'll need, and this is, this is going to be the hard part of it, uh, because it is kind of a board. So the first player places um, two cubes or paper clips on any two numbers that they want, even the same number. So if I want to place it on six and six, I can do that as well. Uh, you then multiply the numbers together. So six times six is 36, and then you place uh, a cube on your 36. The other player, on their turn, moves one of the paper clips or the whatever markers you use to another number. They cannot put it on, um, they, can't, they have to move it. And so they would move it to like 6 times 7 or whatever it is. And then they put their, they multiply together and they put their answer there. The object of the game is to get four in a row. But while you're learning, so when they first learn this, they try to make four in a row and they don't care about what their other teammate is doing. And as they start to play more and more, pardon me, they learn to uh, block their other opponent or to remove, you know, I'm not going to put this, this tip on, on a certain number because I know that it's going to give you a winning combination. So now they're also dividing. They're finding patterning in algebra. They're building their spatial sense. So this game has a lot of strategy and really builds a good sense of numbers around multiplication and division. The next game is called Part Hole Bingo. It is from Fosno's um, math game books. So if you own her uh, Context to Mathematics um, bin uh, for primary, one of them is a math game uh, book. Inside of this game is called Part Hole Bingo. Uh, you will need dice for this game, and you'll need um, m some sort of markers. So that's why I said that if you want to use like the uh, uh, mathies.ca, you can find tile squares or do various screenshots. We'll see how the game goes <laughs> online, but you can, you can try playing it. The instructions are there, but the idea is there are various bingo cards. So students roll two dice uh, from one to six, and they have to um, add the numbers together, and then they have to fill in their um, columns. So the only rule is that they have to fill the column all the way. So if they get uh, if they have seven, they can put it in the number seven, but they can't put like seven in the nine column because there would be two left over. So they, they start to really pull apart numbers and build a part whole relation, which is huge in primary. I know where my daughter is struggling right now in grade two as she starts to add bigger numbers is the fact that she doesn't understand that numbers can be pulled apart. Um, 
and really understand that place value side of things. So I have those two games for us to play. I'm going to see how it works. <laughs> um, when you are done, uh, I would like you to play one or two or, or, or both. Like you can play both games or just pick one of them. Uh, when you are done, if you can go back to the, um, the participation record sheet, uh, which is the bit.ly, which is uh, this one here, I believe. Hopefully it's the right one. Uh, it should bring you, yeah. It should bring you back to, to the to the to the Google Doc again, uh, where you can talk about the games that you played and how you think you can use in the classroom. And uh, again, if we can, uh, eight minutes to play, maybe ten minutes. No, let's do eight minutes. Eight minutes to play and um, have some fun. And if you have any questions, again, as you play, please uh, put um, them in the chat. So yeah, we'll do eight minutes. Okay, um, so I'm seeing that a lot of people have been in the Google uh, Doc, and I'm loving the fact that you've been uh, playing some of the games, and I'm I'm hoping that this can be a nice little um, just a journal of how what was been, what's been happening uh, today, and so it'll it'll always be linked, and of course you can go back to the presentation, and I'll share that link at the end uh, where you can find everything again. So. Uh, We've always, uh, I think we've heard this. I'm sorry, Michelle. <laughs> um, trying to make the webinar as interactive as possible, and sometimes Blackboard doesn't allow for that to happen. Um, but I will do my best to make sure the Google Doc is <laughs> working a little bit easier for everyone. So um, we've always heard the idea of a bring back mad minutes. Uh, you know, I think some of our parents and some of the uh, lovely uh, critics of education out there think that we need to go back to old school teaching. And I'm hoping that uh, maybe through the whole thing is that we can we can look towards um, the fact that it's not about where we have been teaching or how we've been teaching in the past, but the fact that we can teach more of a balanced approach to learning. Um, I'm not going to uh, make you read the article, uh, but it's a really cool article um, from YouTube about idea about fact fluency and what games allow us to do. So if you need some uh, more proof to uh, why games are important or you want some more education around that to help you uh, with, with your pedagogy and even explaining to parents why they're playing games in the classroom, uh, it's a really good um, li uh, article to read and to think about. And, <laughs> uh, and the idea is that what we're really doing with games is building those purposeful learning. I, I mean, I, I think most of us can be the same way um, that we all learned, most of us learned probably through those flashcards and um, my, my dad was very much uh, a nice Asian dad where I had to memorize all my facts on, and if I didn't learn all my facts, then he was kind of like, why aren't you, you know, you know, you need to know these faster and I have them every five seconds and 
uh, when you have uh, an LD in uh, retaining memory issues, uh, it, it becomes a little harder for to always have a memorization. And so facts were never something that I could easily obtain. Uh, however, when I started seeing kids learn and working through things, it was really cool to see the strategies. And then that's how I became a better math teacher. Um, it was watching kids learn. And that's what I, I, I love about games, is that it teaches you to take a look at why and how and the strategies and the talk that goes with it. Uh, I also love games for, for a couple other reasons. So games allow students to learn concepts, period. Uh, it's a fun and engaging way. Uh, I know for my daughter who, again, has an LD and, and actually has communication, um, another article is linked there, <laughs> but you don't have to read it. Um, she loves playing games, and that's how she learns. And, and most students enjoy playing them. And we're going to get to a board game section in a minute, and, and you're going to see how much gaming can be used in the classroom. It's easy to differentiate. Uh, it's easy to share uh, a certain game, even the same game, and, and either allow certain students entry points in a, in a lower entry point or build in those higher entry points for students. Uh, they provide context for learning. So when they are in a problem-solving situation, you can remind them about a game. You can say, hey, what strategies did we use? You know, you might even point to a certain wall that you have of strategies that students were using. Uh, it engages purposeful practice, especially at home. Uh, one thing that research shows uh, over and over again is the connection that kids have with their parents and that home connection is the part that continues to build success. And I know parents sometimes don't always want to hear the fact that they have to spend time with their kids, but um, that home life of, of playing games um, can build a lot of good memories, but also build those facts fluencies. Uh, and there is a connection to memory. Uh, and so the more that we play the game, the better we get at certain memories and the better we get at certain things. And then on top of that, you have your learning skills. And I think as, a, as an educator, especially when you're, when you're trying to write report cards, um, these are great things to think about uh, is, all those, is all those games and how they can build those learning skills to students. Uh, I do have fraction games. I'm, um, according, uh, with time, though, I don't think we can play them. But you can feel free um, when I show the link later on. This, this, this slide deck is live, and all the links to the games are there. Uh, they are Marilyn Burns uh, games, and you can find them in, in a lot of her books. Um, but they're great ones, and I think a lot of us are um, in probably teaching fractions around that, unless you're in grade six and you're doing EQO in grade three. I uh, hope everything went well today. Um, so board games. Has anyone, and this is where Craig's going to jump right in, has anyone used board games in the classroom? So in the discussion window, can you tell me how and what games uh, you might have had? And if you haven't used board games, that's okay, too. Um, but what games have you used in the classroom? Um, <laughs> and there's, there's, there's like three different versions of it. There's Blocus Trigon, there's Blocus uh, Duo, Blocus, and then um, Blocus 3D, which is a lot of fun as well. Farkle, I have, n oh yeah, okay, now I remember Farkle, yeah. Oh, and Bloke is Junior, nice. Yes, these are all awesome ones. And that's where we often use them is in indoor recess. Um, and, uh, but the funny part is that we can use board games for a lot more um, strategy games. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, Catherine. Um, I, I call it Blockus or Blocus. Um, a lot of people call it different things. I've, I've yet to figure out which one it is. <laughs> oh, no, it, it, it's uh, B-L-O-K-U-S. Oh, 
Oh, that's cool. Django with mass facts built into it. Man, you guys are amazing. <laughs> Craig's going to have a lot. He's your board game guy. And I'm going to share his YouTube channel in a minute. Yes. Yes, bank books, uh, especially with digital literacy, um, I think that's an important thing to have and, and do. Okay, this is awesome. So uh, my friend, uh, Sandra Chow, she's a Toronto, she actually works for TVO, uh, a seconded from the Toronto District School Board. Um, she's actually created a whole uh, presentation on how to create online board games. So you can actually turn all your favorite games, like Monopoly or Blocus, into uh, a Google a Google um, presentation and then kids can actually play these games, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, there's the link to it. Um, don't have time to look through it all. But uh, she also on, in there has a list of games that she's already created. And there's, there's the list. And you can play some of these games uh, if you want to. Uh, we're not playing them today. But uh, it'll allow you to, to work through them. But board games are uh, really influential, just like normal games. Um, or I shouldn't say normal games. They're all normal. Um, but just like we were even talking about with card games and with the paper games, I'm going to call them, uh, that you played with the part hole or whatever it is, board games have so much mass built into them. Um, and there's, uh, I can't, Craig, do you remember the uh, 39,000 games or something like that? Or is there more uh, out there? And there's a whole list of games that you can find. Um, that for various, various reasons um, and for various curriculum. Just like apps, there's tons of board games. Now, the thing to remember with board games is, though, what are you teaching? So what skills are you teaching and what is your purpose? So just like we would make a purposeful math lesson around uh, a problem, you can make that with board games. And so just, just with everything that I – anything today, just keep that in mind. Uh, as a teacher, we have – we have that ability to make sure that we are teaching good pedagogy. And I think that's the key to, to all of that. So uh, there's the list again. Uh, I know I could put them in the, uh, in the chat window. Um, but the, the other one you can look at is uh, Craig's uh, got a YouTube channel called Board Game Teacher. Uh, and so he has uh, quite a lot of videos up there about, um, oh yeah, there we go. Thanks, Craig. Uh, 98,000 board games. He has not done 98,000 videos, but he has tons of other games that you can try, especially around language. I know this is my math, but there are language ones as well um, that you can look through. I also have my primary, I've, I've videotaped a lot of my primary games uh, in a tutorial, and my math game folder has all the games that I've collected uh, for paper and whatnot uh, that you can easily print off for your own uh, board game library. I've also added in, yes, sightwords.com, uh, awesome. That works as well. So uh, as we wrap up our uh, webinar, I know there's um, still about 15 minutes, but I um, figured that we can add some questions or we can, uh, I know Michael has some ending, ending slides that need to happen before 9 o'clock as well. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I will add them later. I thought I had those links for you. It's okay. I will, um, I will make sure they're in there uh, for you tomorrow. So uh, in the discussion tab, any questions that I haven't answered about math games um, or if anything needs to, if you'd like to go back to, um, back to the list. Uh, again, um, I'm always available through Twitter, uh, at Mr. So Classroom. Uh, you can email me, uh, so.jonathan1 at gmail.com is the easiest way to reach me, uh, or my, um, my website uh, where all the, uh, everything is found is bit.ly slash uh, capital M at Mr. So, or, uh, Mr. So's uh, resources. And so you can find everything that I have, uh, I've just said, is in that link there. Any questions? Miss anything? Thanks, Greg. 
Thanks, Caroline. So I'm sorry I finished a little bit earlier, but uh, still nice outside too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> yes, my favorite stores are dollar stores in general for, for pretty much all my manipulatives and dice and, and everything. Um, yeah, so I encourage you tomorrow to try some of, the, um, some of these games out with your students. Uh, have fun with them. Um, and build some of those uh, those lovely relationships with them. Thank you, Megan. Okay, if no one has any questions, I'll hand over everything to uh, back to. Okay, so I'm going to jump in with you. Know, it's never too bad to end early. Uh, last week I had a session that uh, ran uh, up to. Uh, Nine thirty, and uh, I could I could hear that it was uh, getting really long, and uh, participants were starting to drop off. So it's like uh, ending class early on the Friday afternoon. You know, it, nobody nobody complains. Um, but really, it was a, a fantastic session, uh, lots of fun and games, um, and I still can't wrap my head around the fact that you would have actually run. 20 kilometers in such a short time, uh, but I, 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 it's true that the session was a bit shorter than usual. So you, you may not have made it all the way to the to the 20 kilometer mark, but still. Um, and I agree with uh, with Jonathan. We had a really smart uh, group tonight, uh, and you guys did all really great. Um, and despite some of the problems with Jonathan Internet's um, connection. Um, but on the plus side, I think that we all had a lot of fun with uh, Jonathan's uh, chipmunk voice uh, from time to time. So uh, it's, always, uh, it's always quite funny to hear that. Um, but thank you so much, um, all of you, for um, sharing your, your enthusiasm and sharing your ideas with each other. It's always wonderful to see such a great level of participation. I, I really loved it. Um, and as uh, we mentioned, we will uh, post all the links and all the resources on the OTF website and you will receive a link to that page tomorrow. So any link that uh, we're missing, uh, Jonathan will send them to me and I will add them later. Uh, if you can give me another two minutes, I just want to point to a few things uh, that may be of interest to you. Uh, we have a great session actually uh, on the 31st uh, next week is this session here on May 31st, Digging Deep to Make Math Moments Matter with Cal Pierce and John Orr. Um, I really recommend that session uh, if you want to uh, enjoy Jonathan's session tonight. It's going to be uh, something a bit similar. Um, and uh, Kyle and John are, are really great uh, facilitators. So I, I definitely recommend that uh, session. I also um, want you guys to know that um, OTF has organized a fantastic conference on July 5th and 6th, uh, the Thursday and Friday of the first week of July at the airport holiday inn. Um, the conference is called Teaching Math Through Problem Solving. It's the part two. The part one was uh, done last year. Uh, we have a number of our OTF uh, Connex facilitators uh, that are going to participate. Uh, we had uh, Marike Goindy and Matt Aldrich with us about two weeks ago. Uh, and as I just mentioned, Cal Pierce and John Orr will be presenting on OTF Connects next week on the 31st. And uh, last but not least, I think that Jonathan is also presenting at uh, this conference. So um, I think it's going to be a, a great conference. Though. So that's that's for the good news. Now, the bad news is that, unfortunately, the conference is completely sold out. Um, so that's a bit of a bad news. But if you can't make it to the conference this year, um, there will be another one next year, obviously. But uh, you can also join us for the presentation of Cal and John uh, next week on May 31st. Um, uh, another piece of information I just want to quickly share with you is that uh, if you are a, a qualified teacher and you have um, uh, completed an additional qualification course in math, technology, or kindergarten, you may be eligible for a $450 subsidy. And I'm going to paste in the chat box the link for you guys to apply uh, for that uh, to that $450 subsidy. Uh, through the OTF uh, website. Um, just want to remind you that we value your feedback tremendously. When leaving Blackboard, you will be redirected to a feedback questionnaire. It takes a few minutes. If you could do it tonight, that would be great. If you can't, 
Um, please try to do it tomorrow, maybe. Uh, and then after the feedback questionnaire, you will be redirected to a second page um, where you can enter your name and then you will receive a certificate of participation to this um, uh, OTF Connect session. And you can then add that certificate of participation to your uh, learning resume, to your uh, curriculum vitae. So that's it. <clears throat> I just want to thank you all uh, one more time for uh, participating in two tonight's session. It was really a great, great session. And I certainly hope to see you soon um, on OTF Connects, uh, if not next week for Kyle and John's um, session, and then hopefully uh, next season uh, starting in September or October of, of next year. Thank you so much. Uh, et merci à toutes uh, et à tous. Au revoir.